Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna talk about Black Crush. Now, Black Crush is a huge deal at this moment because the ROG 3 and the OnePlus 8 Pro suffer severely from this. Now, there's this common misconception that it's caused by high refresh rate, which I do not understand how you even get to that conclusion. Because the first times we actually had, like the first phones which actually had massive black crush were the Pixel 2 XL and the Galaxy S9, which are both 60 hertz screens. So where the hell that misconception came from, I'm not entirely sure. That being said, let's explain why this is happening to our precious phones. And also, don't worry, this is not a hardware issue. It's a software issue. It can be fixed. So let's go ahead. And in order to understand the Black Crush issue, you have to get a really, really, really basic understanding on how LCDs work and OLEDs work. Now, I want to stress out and uh, I really want to make sure you understand. I am aware this is way more complicated than this, but I'm going to make it as basic as possible so that people actually, you know, um, can understand this. I'm aware there are typical. There are lots of different methods of creating backlight, and there's a lot like uh, how the LCD makes the picture. I am aware of the color filter, etc. I'm I'm completely aware of this. But for sake of argument, uh, for sake of this purpose, I will just say we have a backlight layer here and a well image production layer on the LCD. Now what happens is when I go ahead and let's say 50% brightness, I go and calibrate my LCD screen. What happens is I calibrate these colors to show a, uh, my perfect calibrated colors at 50%. Now, if I go ahead and change the LCD brightness to 50%, what will happen is the colors will be slightly more washed out to the naked eye. The colors themselves don't really change. The only thing that changes is the backlight. So even if I put it down on 0%, the colors do not shift because this layer is always showing the same colors. On OLED, the story is very different. On OLEDs, every single LED has its own light, which it emits, and its own color. Now, the problem is, if I tell this one to showcase a specific color, and I put more backlight to it, or just, you know, more voltage to it, it'll actually change the color. The complete color will change, so that my calibration at 50% will be completely off at 100%. This is the reason why OLEDs that are calibrated to show the most colors are trying to show colors outside its own space. So it just replaces a color with something else and you'd get the black crush effect. Now, ironically, ASUS, because I'll, when I read the forums, it's, it's, a, it's a real clusterfuck. Um, people say stuff like, oh, it's because they cheaped out on, mo uh, on the monitor, uh, on the uh, uh, displays and whatnot now that's simply not true in fact the reason why this is happening is because oneplus and asus actually wanted to give you the most out of their screens now if i take a colorful picture and compare my rock 3 with a note 20 ultra from samsung the rock 3 will look much much better it's very clear that this screen is in some way calibrated so obviously it looks better than the note 20 uh, note 20 ultra however due to the shift it just ruins everything in dark scenes now let me showcase here is a trailer from um you know marvel uh the avenger uh, avengers now as you can see here everything looks fine and dandy woo space beautiful now let me fuck with the gamma levels and i'm going to show you what happens this is going to be a very interesting sight, isn't it? Oh, well, that's kind of familiar, isn't it? Welcome to Black Crush. Now, this is exactly what happens with our phones. Because of the fact that Asus and OnePlus uh, have tried to calibrate the OLED screen, they have now this issue where the gamma level shifts based on brightness. So, now that we understand the problem, how exactly is Asus going to, f or can, how can they fix it? Now, typically would think, oh, well, then we just, then Asus just have to make, you know, a profile for each and every brightness level and then push it out, right? 
Well, not entirely. You see, monitors, even though they are the same, or rather screens on phones, they are the same, they still require slightly different values on each and every single screen to actually be 100% color accurate and fully working. So the only real solution to, you know, get rid of the black crush 100% on each and every phone is actually making the user calibrate the colors or gamma themselves, whether it be, whether it be professionally with tools or just, you know, eye measure. Um, and so what Asus can do here is they can, in their splendid software option, they could, um, you know, add a gamma level which will then hook into um, whatever um, whatever uh, screen brightness you have. It's very important that it's also going to be RGB, like not, you know, gamma level for each and every single, like all the channels, because it, this seems to be a greater shift. At 25%, my gamma is at 1.8 on red. Blue is at 2.0 and no, uh, blue is actually on 2.2 and green is at 2.0, which, yeah, I assume that's why they do the red tint. Um, strange, isn't it? So we actually have to be able to put the gamma level on each and every channel on each and every single brightness. Now, you can obviously do it in steps of 10%. So 10% brightness, 0%, you know, 20, 30, blah, blah, blah. I would, however, propose that you let the user just, you know, do it themselves, like where they can add a percentage. So... Maybe once one wants to do it in steps of 20 because they're a little lazy. Maybe one like me wants to get the most out of the screen, just having in every single percent. So not only does does the user have to uh, like have the ability to put the gamma levels and stuff to the brightness levels, but then they also have to make sure the color profiles are applied based on each um, brightness uh, setting that they're putting at. Now I. I am a software developer, so technically I could do a solution like this myself. However, it's not a feasible solution because in order to actually have access to something as a color reproduction on the screen, that would actually require root access. And obviously I could root my phone and uh, not worry too much about the warranty because if the phone breaks, I, I'm more than likely able to fix it myself. Uh, that being said, it's not really a feasible thing for the community. Sure, I can make the app, but that will require you all to lose your warranty by rooting your phone in order to actually use the app, which is just not feasible. So Asus actually have to do this. Now, I do encourage everyone to share this video if you're suffering from Black Crush, be it OnePlus or Asus, because obviously developers are not really um, aware of the cause. I mean, it's pretty obvious at this point, especially with Asus. Asus has uh, had a huge amount of backlash. Um, from the community. They were all complaining about Black Crush. So Asus have put out some hot fixes. So one is, is the red tint at low um, brightness level. And one is a, you know, a um, transparent layer on YouTube and Chrome. I'm not sure why they do this. It's, it's yeah, sure, it will mitigate it a little bit, but the colors will be completely washed out. And instead of black, you have dark gray. So yeah, it doesn't really fix the gamma level. It'll just shift it a little bit. So everyone on Asus uh, 0.0 or at version 0.8, which is the current one uh, at the making of this video, you probably have this issue. And you can actually also disable their hotfix, which at least will, you will have the normal colors with, you know, a little more black crush. I personally prefer that over washed out and just awful. Uh, you open the developer options. You can Google how to do that. Um, or it could just, you know, go about phone, press the the build number 10 times, you know, with the finger, da, 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 and then it'll unlock it. Now you want to go into developer settings. You want to, you want to find HV overlay, hardware overlay, I guess that stands for, and then just disable it. If you disable it, that bullshit will go away. Now, in my case, it doesn't really um, stay off. I have to do it every time I reboot the phone. Luckily, you don't really reboot the phone a whole lot. So... Yay there. Uh, however, I do hope Asus will, um, you know, get rid of that because I think it's doing more harm than good. That being said, um, there's also one thing I want to talk about too is a black crush based on hardware issues. Now, 
To my knowledge, AMOLED screens have a TFT layer, which kind of supplies the correct voltages to the OLEDs. And I want to demonstrate to you guys a hardware defect. Now, here we go, and we can see it looks like almost dirt, right? This is actually a hardware damage. Now, let me explain how you can actually see that this is a hardware damage and not actually software or based on the video, etc. Now, as we can see, you got in a corner here on my phone. And what I do now is turn the phone 180 degrees. And guess what? It's now gone. Well, where is it? Well, it's um, in the other corner now. So if you actually have Black Crush that shifts based on orientation of your phone, then that is a hardware defect. So more than likely the TFT layer is borked or some controller is programmed wrong or whatever the hell it the case may be so if you have that kind of issue you actually have a hardware issue you can then uh, ask for a placement and explain to them okay this is not a software flag crush this is actually black crush caused by hardware because of orientation with that explanation uh, at my store here um, they approved it i got my new phone and obviously this is now gone this issue here obviously i still have black crush though um, but it's software based and not a hardware issue so in case you have this issue here with the asus phone I assume it's going to be like maybe 1% of you guys that actually have this issue. It's going to be very rare. So just point that one out. Um, yeah. So I hope you guys learned something today. And um, this is just one last message to the community and to ACES themselves. First, the community. Uh, I think the community should stop spreading a lot of rumors. If you don't know exactly what the cause is for Black Crush, please do not just yell out whatever you think it is and just call it a fact. Now, the idea that it's caused by high refresh rate and the idea that it's a hardware issue and they're quoting some weird support people from OnePlus, which is so strange to me because support people are not technicians. They don't they don't really understand what they're talking about. Um, so do not ever take their word for, you know, fact. Um, so there's that. Uh, I do think you're overblowing the whole issue a lot and you're kind of... You're kind of forcing ASUS to, to do half-assed mitigations just to appease you, just so you stop spamming their forums with the same thing. They are aware of the Black Crush. Now, with ASUS, however, I also have a little bone to pick here. First of all, ASUS should be a little more uh, transparent, maybe on the forums and the Zen talk. They could make like a one sticky saying, the problems we are aware of, boom, Black Crush. They could, you know, at least make it publicly away available to everyone that it is... Um, a problem they acknowledge and are working on. However, I do not think it's a good idea to, you know, put this overlay, you know, the, this this transparent layer and the, the red tint just to kind of mitigate the black crush. I, I think that's just awful solutions. They're not great. And I'm pretty sure you guys are also aware of the fact that it's not exactly a great solution. So instead of, you know, putting out half-ass solutions, try to be a little more transparent with your community. I think that'll go a long way. Uh, so that both sides can be a little more happy. Because right now it's it's just a clusterfuck. Like ASUS is doing these hot fixes. Mixed with the fact that the community is just blowing up in their face. Like in ASUS's face saying cheap screen and whatnot. Because they basically have no clue what they're talking about. I mean, god damn it. That's just, it's, it's a sad display really. Um, I think it's it's a really sad display of, um, of uh, you know, a uh, community and developer uh you know, relationship. So I hope this will change. I hope uh, Asus will definitely see this. I'm again. I'm not talking too much about OnePlus because I don't really have much faith that OnePlus will actually do something about it. I don't. I don't know if they actually have the resources to, you know, make a, hard, a software solution that will fix it. I'm. I'm unsure if they actually can do that. If they have the resources for it. However, from Asus. I know they can. There's there's no way they cannot. Uh, if they don't do it, then it's because of pure laziness. But obviously, since ASUS is trying to fix this and doing hot fixes and seeing their software suit and everything, I'm more than certain that ASUS is probably going to fix this relatively soon, especially after knowing what is the actual cause. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you learned something and chill a little bit more. See you on the next one.